All right, hey everybody, good afternoon. Well, happy Friday, as we told you, as part of, uh, I know it's not even Wednesday, it's not our midweek shout out. Well, we'll call this our CNC Freebie Friday, okay? Well, we told you we programmed a package. Uh, I did it for a client on a commission, custom commission game board. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically show you the package real quick. This is everything you get. Uh, we'll go a little bit more in detail. It looks a little more than it actually is, okay? But it's a solid package. It is nice, uh, and it's going to construct one game board. All right. This was the original template that I had to start with. All right. I had to go in, clean all this up. It's a six-person aggravation game board. Okay. Now, out of this, what we've done is we have rendered you three different styles. Now, I'm going to show you. This is style one. The actual game board itself going around never changes, nor do the home positions, but where your starting position is with your game pieces. We give you three different designs. The lateral, I give you the square, and then we, uh, we rotate that 90 degrees and you get kind of a diamond shape. Like I said, the board doesn't change, but this is what we've done for you, okay? I've also included a painting schematic, if you would, this is a picture of the actual game board itself. Let me uh, let me minimize this just a little bit. This is uh, just a reference so you can paint it. The red, the blue, the green, the yellow, the white, and the black. All right. What else do we have for you in this package? Let's see here. Ah, yes. This is the game uh, pieces with the dies in this little pouch that I showed you in the uh, the intro video. Okay. I will provide you a README sheet, a Word doc, inside this package. I just haven't put it together yet. We'll provide you with the correct links of where to go. We're not affiliated, but this person, I've, I've bought these from before. I haven't had a problem with shipping, and it's a, reputable, uh, it's a reputable website. Everybody has heard, and they know about Amazon, so that's where we got these from, okay? I think they're right around 10 bucks goes over it goes over ten dollars with shipping but nonetheless it's a nice package alright so let's minimize all this what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna bring in the game board but oh we also have a PDF copy of the classic marble race game these are the rules right here this was uh, somebody had shared what looks to be like an image off their phone of the original uh, of the original rules so we've included that PDF file in there so that you will actually know how to play the game. What else do we have? Uh, yes, let's bring it up. We have the game board. Now, as I told you, uh, and just for the sake of this example, we're going to use this one with the lateral lines. We have three tool paths in here, okay? I put in a 90 degree V bit running it under a profile command. I go 250 thousandths deep and it renders a really nice bevel to give it a nice profile on the side. All right. Uh, we've got our feeds and speeds set. I could dig out deeper, but my particular bit was a little dull. So we started out at an eighth of an inch. It'll do two passes at 60 IPM. Okay. The other tool path is, in fact, all of the holes. Now, this is kind of why we've made this video. I would suggest if you decide to just go get your marbles and dice at say maybe the buck store, throw a set of verniers on the physical uh, marbles or game pieces you choose, okay? Because you may have to adjust not only your hole size, these right now are currently set up for 500 thousandths or a half an inch, okay? Now what I did to do my holes throughout my board was I used a quarter inch ball nose <clears throat> again uh, that's running at 12,000 RPM at 80 inches per minute and I got my plunge rate set for 125 thousandths. I didn't want to risk chipping the surface of this alright so it mills out pretty quick just the same alrighty now the only thing I can suggest for you uh, for the game pieces that I've shown you and I've selected 187 thousandths uh, deep works really well. If you go with larger game pieces though, again, uh, I would cut a separate tool path up here for your pocket, 
I would highlight just one of these and I would make my adjustments in increments or even on a scrap piece of material, okay? Uh, the cutout, because we put a 250 thousandths bevel on the side, whatever my bevel is, you'll see right here, I go 10 thousandths beyond. So the offset is 260 thousandths. I don't want to cut any of that bevel off because it gives it a really nice, uh, gives it a really nice dimensional reveal on the surface of the uh, the game board itself. We've got plenty of tabs in here, okay. And the last, second to last thing, our job size. We've set this up for 24 inch by 24 inch. Now, by placing it on 24 inch by 24 inch, you can do this out of MDF if you wanted. You could even do it on a piece of scrap plywood. I opted to, uh, I had some Douglas fir left over from the bench project. The client was more than pleased to, to go with that. It, it did come out really nice. And uh, later on, I'll try to remember to put pictures into the finished, painted, sealed project, all right? Uh, you could basically go out, use two by stock, uh, glue and clamp, Use your, uh, if you don't have a shop planer big enough to do a 24 inch wide piece of uh, material, well, you, in previous videos we've had, you can go in and you can plane it down with your spoiler board bit both sides. Use the, the nicer uh, of the two sides for your face, okay? Well, lastly, the other thing I told you is we did a few inserts, okay? We're going to go into, uh, we'll go to our import file. Now, the one thing we did do within the import file is we gave you a multitude of different options. You may not have a VCarve Pro, so a proprietary Vectric CRV file isn't going to work if you run a different type of CAD software. So we included DXF as well as EPS. We gave you the four military emblems, uh, some comical little goofy faces, a peace sign. Let me find the, uh, the skull and bones. Okay, right here. We'll open them up. We'll bring them in. There's the skull and bones, okay? Basically, that would incorporate a fourth tool if you chose. You could go into uh, your VCarve engraving toolpath function. I've already got it set up for a V-bit at 90, uh, I'm sorry, 60 degree V-bit. Oh, goodness, don't mind me, I need more caffeine. All right, let's highlight him. I only put the circle in as strictly as reference. So when you highlight it, hold your shift key down and you can just turn him off or on. If you want to ring around him, it's entirely up to you. Again, it's your, uh, it's your game board. We can hit calculate. All right, well, let's preview everything. And Kapow, there you have it. And let's make sure that he's black. All righty, and there you have it. You've got your game board. Like I said, we'll include the link to the game pieces. If you want to do an emblem, something other than what we've done here, then by all means, all you'd have to do is open up a new VCarve Pro section of software, set your workspace up for seven by seven, your thickness and all that, it, it really doesn't matter. It's kind of a trivial point. But what you have, let me pull the, uh, the rendering back up again. If we look at this circle right here and we come down to transform objects, it's a 6.5 inch diameter circle, okay? Well, I'm going to close this out. We're not going to save it. We have a piece of 7 inch by 7 inch workspace. We'll come in, we'll draw a circle. We're going to put it at a 6.5 inch diameter. Click apply. Now, come down to your transform objects. Let's center him. All righty. And then any import that you bring in, just keep it within this circle. Save it as whatever. That's how I've done all these other images that I've given you. Save it as that. Uh, maybe you've got a, uh, I don't know, you, you got a horseshoe in there, or you've got a picture of whatever. Save it as that. Put it into your, uh, put it into the folder with the aggravation samples themselves and then you can drag your own image in. But that's how I basically built it for the center itself, okay? Well, everybody, uh, I hope you enjoy this. If it's raining where you are this weekend, by gosh, grab your little one, head out to the wood shop, fire up the equipment, and uh, keep them safe, but have a good time with you and yours, okay? 
I hope you guys have a great weekend. If it is sunny out, well then, by God, get outdoors, okay? But uh, take care. We'll see you on the Sunday evening blog. Again, as always, thank you guys so much, you ladies and gentlemen, for your support and following me and, and just keeping us going, all right? All right, everyone. Take care and thank you again.